A DuPont analysis provides insight into how a company's return on equity was generated by decomposing the return into three components, operating efficiency, asset effectiveness, and capital structure. The first component is a company's operating efficiency. It is calculated as net income divided by sales, which is also known as the profit margin ratio. This component reveals a company's ability to turn sales into profits. The higher the ratio, the more efficient a company is in turning sales into profits. The second component is a company's effectiveness at using its assets. It is calculated as sales divided by assets. This ratio is commonly known as the asset turnover ratio. It measures the ability of a company to generate sales from its asset base. The higher the ratio, the more effective a company is in generating sales given its assets. The third component is a company's capital structure. For this analysis, it is calculated as assets divided by equity. This ratio is similar to the total debt to assets and debt to equity ratios in that it measures how a company has generated its assets. The higher the ratio, the more a company is financing its assets with debt rather than equity. So a higher ratio means more financial leverage and a riskier capital structure. Sometimes this ratio is called the leverage multiplier or the equity multiplier. So let's take a look at the DuPont analysis for Best Buy. This analysis shows why Best Buy's return to its owners decreased from 2009 to 2010. So if you look at the top is 2010 and at the bottom is 2009, and so you see that the profitability ratio has gone down. We knew that already. Um, total asset turnover has gone up, but um, the assets to equity ratio has gone down. So because the profits from sales were down, that resulted in a lower return on equity. But I would also say that the change in the capital structure is lowering the return on equity as well. So one of the main benefits of a DuPont analysis is the ability to, ability to ask what-if questions. This slide presents two what-if questions. For example, what if Best Buy was able to squeeze out some more profit on each dollar of sales? How would that affect the return to owners? Alternatively, what if the market for electronics took a significant downturn and Best Buy was only able to generate sales of 1.5 times their assets on hand? Would that significantly affect the return to investors? So let's take these questions one at a time. So if Best Buy was able to uh, squeeze out another two cents of profit on each dollar of sales, how would that affect the return to owners? Well, that means that the 2010 return would increase to 0.31, the return on equity, because, let's see, let's go back and look at our numbers. That's because um, the profit margin would go from 2.5 cents, or 2.5% to 4.5%, everything else staying the same. So that would increase the return on equity to 0.31 instead of 0.175. Now in the second question, if the market for electronics took a downturn and Best Buy was only able to generate sales of 1.5 times their assets, what would happen? Well in that case, the profit margin wouldn't change, but the total asset turnover would drop from 2.82 to 1.5. And so that would make the return on equity drop to um, 0 0.093 instead of 